All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the tropics again, just like we did two days ago. And now there's two areas that we're keeping our eyes on. So we're gonna get all into that within this video. All right, for today's comment of the day, I wanna know, do you think both, only one, or neither of these systems will develop? Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and we're taking a look at some satellite imagery and this is our first area that we're keeping an eye on uh, is in the very, very southern Caribbean and you can see that red there. It's just below, or sorry, just above the 75 degrees west uh, symbol there. Uh, just to the north of there, you can see a lot of reds and blacks going on and that is about to come over some open water and that could potentially develop a little bit. Uh, but honestly, this one seems like it's going to kind of fizzle out until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico, where it's going to kind of meet up with another area from the Pacific, and that's where we could see some magic happen. We're going to need to wait and see with that, uh, and see if that will develop. That's the more likely of the two at this point. Now, as we take a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, you can see there's nothing over the next two days. Very interesting. As we move to the five-day outlook, we do have a 20% chance of tropical development there, in the Southern Caribbean. This does a great job of just pinpointing that area uh, that I was trying to show you guys. Uh, so we're gonna be watching very closely for this. This was at a 20 the last time we made a video, so this has not gone anywhere uh, since then. Uh, we don't have an official invest yet either, so we don't have spaghetti models to show you guys. So we're just gonna have to break this down uh, on the map instead. But for now, we do have a 20% chance risk, and you can see that that one offshore of the East Coast doesn't have any percent chance risk and really I'm only seeing a few indications that there could be some tropical activity I will break that down later on it is a little bit lower odds obviously than that first one which seems to be a uh, decent likelihood that we could see something going on especially according to our European model which we're going to take a look at in a little bit we do have some agreement in the models which is increasing confidence as well Let's just take a look at those sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see, right now it's over some waters that are near normal conditions there north of Central America. However, uh, if we see, if we take a look basically to the north of that region and to the west of that region, where this system could be heading or should be heading, uh, we see that there is some warmer than normal waters and that can help intensify this. That can help just feed this storm more food so that it can grow stronger uh, and larger. And that's what I'm watching for. The, the conditions are much more favorable where this storm is heading. Uh, and that is a concerning outlook, obviously. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to take a look at how these waters have changed over the past seven days so we can get a grip or an idea of what direction these temperatures are heading in. We're also going to take a look at a chart for the Gulf of Mexico. And then we're going to just take a look at some probability of tropical depression and tropical storm maps. Uh, and then just get right into some of the models uh, surface maps and see what this could look like for us. All right, now here we are taking a look at the seven day change sea surface temperatures. And as you can see, uh, we have had some cooling actually in the Gulf of Mexico over those very warm waters. So they actually were warmer before, uh, which is pretty interesting. Look at offshore of the East Coast though, we've seen significant warming. A uh, two to five degree Celsius increase over the past seven days uh, along the eastern seaboard, likely due to those very warm air temperatures that have been around. Uh, so we have seen some significant warming around there. And again, that second system should be potentially moving over those waters, which that would definitely help the development there, uh, to say the least. Here is our Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperature anomalies. Uh, chart and as you can see we did have a dip down around May 26 but this has increased generally and it's sticking around uh, positive uh, 0 0.2 or a 0 0.2 degrees Celsius above what is normal uh, there and for the whole Gulf of Mexico that is a little bit of a actual um, that is a significant departure from normal there actually so we're going to watch that very closely especially if it continues to head in that direction looking long range uh, we're going to need to watch very, very closely for that, obviously, because that could have massive implications for the upcoming months of the hurricane season. As we're going to head deeper and deeper into the hurricane season, we could have, obviously, uh, some more and more uh, implications as far as the sur sea surface temperature anomalies are concerned. Now, let's take a look at probability of tropical depression here, uh, and that's going to be 20 knot winds or more. 
Uh, as you can see, this is over the next three days, the 9th through the 12th. Then this model, the European model, has around a 30 to 40% chance that the first system develops within the next three days. But it does have a 50 to 60% chance that offshore of North Carolina and Virginia, something does develop, which is very interesting. I can tell you it has been stormy, and I have seen systems like this develop, especially in a surprise uh, event. So this is a possibility. Uh, the, the National Hurricane Center has not specified that this is a possibility yet. Wouldn't be surprised to see them add some sort of a chance over the next two days and maybe over the next five days as well. I also would not be surprised if this model is just overdoing it a little bit and maybe the National Hurricane Center sees something that tells them this probably won't happen and they just don't really ever add a risk and it never really happens. Uh, so there is a 50-50 shot. Again, the second one is a lot lower risk, but there is some reason to believe that a system could develop. So I'm not just blindly saying this could happen. I'm showing you right now that this model does show there is a chance of tropical depression status with this one. And actually what we're going to see as we move on in just a moment on days two through five, we're actually going to see an increase in the percent chance as well in just a moment. All right, so here we are taking a look at Friday, June 11th through Monday, June 14th. And as you can see, we do have uh, now still a, let's see, that is a 30 to 40% chance of development still there in the Southern Caribbean. But take a look out of the Pacific. We have a 80 to 90% chance of development south of Mexico. And that actually is creeping some of that percentage, 40 to 50% chance there to the Southern Gulf of Mexico. That area is expected to cross over Mexico and enter into the Gulf of Mexico, which is super interesting. We have seen that happen before in recent years. So that is a possibility for sure. In the offshore of the East Coast, this model is saying a 70 to 80% chance of development now offshore of North Carolina, which is again, just super interesting, especially considering uh, that the National Hurricane Center has not specified this whatsoever. So we're going to need to see if in the coming days they do add a risk area. I would be very curious to see if that does occur. Now, days six through nine, you can see that area that was in the Pacific has now fully entered into the southern Gulf of Mexico. All that energy has transferred over. Uh, now we have a 50 to 60 percent chance of development uh, there in the southern Gulf of Mexico. So I do think there is a decent odds that we do see this energy cross over and we do see a tropical depression. This model does say there is a 10 to 20 percent chance of tropical storm status as well, which again is also super interesting. A stronger storm potentially uh, is what we're looking at. Let's just take a look at that vorticity and this is going to tell a lot of the whole story. So you can see there just south of Mexico there on the very left hand side of your screen there is some reds. That is our tropical system. By the time we're taking a look at about uh, Friday evening, that's going to be June 11th. Uh, and by the time we're taking a look at about Monday morning, that's going to be June 14th, you can see a lot of that energy is located right over Mexico. And then by the time we're reaching about Thursday night, that's going to be June 17th, pretty far out here, so take it with a grain of salt. But we do see a lot of that energy has transferred over into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's actually looking quite intense. But especially by the time we're taking a look at about Friday night, June 18th, you can see that we do have those pinks showing up. This is actually looking like a stronger system by that point, and that does eventually hit Texas, which is very interesting. Again, the location, that's going to be something that doesn't really matter this far out because it can really go anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico if it does cross over. So I don't want to specify a location too much. Uh, the GFS is in agreement. This is by Thursday afternoon. We do see a lot of that energy in the Gulf of Mexico. This one also eventually, by the time we're reaching Saturday evening, does have it hitting Texas as well, anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a three out of six. Obviously, things are a little bit further out. There is a lot of things that we're kind of speculating about that it's hard to tell if it will happen or won't happen, especially that area offshore of the East Coast and also that area in the Pacific heading over, crossing over Mexico and heading into the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of things need to happen for all of this to happen the way these models are showing it right now. So my confidence is a bit lower. I would say we're at about a 20 to 40% chance, or a, a sorry, 20 to 40% confidence at this point in all of these things happening individually. Uh, for today's comment of the day, we talked about an upcoming cool down in yesterday's video. And I asked you guys, do you prefer to kind of stay warmer or are you looking forward to the cool down? And Miranda Carpenter said, the cooler, the better. And I know a lot of you feel that way here during the summer months. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Bennick, James Wade, Dovinega, Lur the Pan, and Donna Carnes. 
alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Fligos, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cronenthal. If you would like to join this patron and screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also ask... I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one and Catbite as well. If you'd like to join this one, it'll be next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.